Hi, I'm Jessica Salaji, publisher of TheGeorgiaVirtue.com. We're so excited to offer a compilation of videos this election season. The TGV Candidate Spotlight Series is an independent video feature produced with one goal in mind, providing voters with as much information as possible before they head to the polls. There's no agenda, we don't make endorsements, and we aren't beholden to any giant media corporation. The series is produced thanks to our advertisers and the generous donations made to the TGV Sunlight Fund and communities we cover. We extended an offer to all of the candidates seeking office this year, and to ensure the integrity of the questions and in fairness to all the opponents, every interview was recorded prior to the release of the videos in that race. For that reason, candidates who did not agree to an interview prior to the air date for their race will not be featured in this series. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget, you can find more content on this election cycle and much, much more on thegeorgiavirtue.com. There's never been a better time to upgrade at Franklin Toyota. Hurry in and save big on our entire inventory of your favorite new Toyotas. All marked with the honest, transparent, and upfront pricing you've come to expect from Franklin. The price you see is the price you pay. No gimmicks and no games. Get it fast, get it fair, get it forever. That's the Franklin guarantee because at Franklin, we're here for you. Visit us on Commerce Drive in Statesboro or shop our complete inventory online at franklintoyota.com. Today we're chatting with Stacey Mincy. She's a candidate for Scriven County Commission in District 4. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, why don't you start off by just telling us a little bit about you and your family and your ties to Scriven County. Okay, well, I was born and raised in Scriven County. Um, I grew up here and my grandparents actually lived in District 4. So I spent like a lot of my childhood in District 4. Um, I graduated from high school here and then went off to college. I worked as a teacher for like 15 years. Um, I'm married to my husband, Alan. We have, um, we've been married for like 21 years now. It's kind of, so um, we have a son, Ben, who is at Georgia Southern he, and studies, um, inter, he does like international um, relations is what he's studying. And then we, about four years ago, we adopted our daughter, Ariel. She's 13 now, she was eight at the time. Awesome. And the districts did change a little bit, I think, recently, is, and that's in effect for this coming election. Do you want to just talk a little bit about, like, what District 4, I mean, you don't have to get into the specifics, we'll put the map up, but just kind of give people a... Yes, that's great, because it did change, and a lot of people still don't seem to know the, about the lines. Like, I don't, I'm not sure that everybody's been informed yet. So basically, District 4 goes down Poor Robin, and then it goes up William Store Road, and um, goes across old poor Robin for a bit, goes down like down 24 and from there it goes pretty much to the county line. And it then on the other side, it goes down Shepherd, Sp Shepherd Switch, middle kind of follows middle ground and then goes out and crosses over 21 at Union Church Road and goes, follows Union Church Road. And we have pretty much the whole Southern border of the, or the whole like Effingham line now. Gotcha. Um, so you're running in the Republican primary. I am. And thankfully, um, local politics don't have the crazy hot button issues that we see at the national right. level, but it's still a tough time to run for office. So why are you running for office right now? Change. We need change. Like, um, I just became very, um, convinced that we needed to have some change. And I was looking around for somebody to do it. Like, okay, who would be a good person to run that could bring change? And then after I had a couple of people ask me about running, I felt like it was my responsibility. Like we, I just really believe that we have to take responsibility by voting and by running for office when needed. We can't just go, well, I wish there was change. When we have the opportunity, we have to do something about it. What do you feel like are the biggest issues Grevin County is facing or maybe just kind of give us three topics that are at the top of your list of Oh, okay, great. So, um, well, if you look at my signs, I have community, trust, and progress. And I think that's a great, that just kind of sums up what we need. Community, we need to work together to fix some of the things in the community. And when I go around, everybody is talking about the roads and trash. There are some other things that can also be worked on, but um, that's just a big problem for people because it causes daily issues for them. And then the really big one, is trust. People don't trust our county government right now. And there's a lot of talk about what's going on or what's not going on. But the big thing is, 
if there's nothing going on, shine a light. You're not scared to shine a light on it. If when things are open and visible, we people know what's going on and they don't have to question it. But when everything's kind of hidden, people do become suspicious and they become concerned. So I really want to just bring transparency to the county government. And the last one is progress. We need progress. We need um, to keep like the the population declines every year. Um, I was I was at a I was at a, well, it was actually the Republican town hall. And one of the, the city people was talking, she's also a teacher, she was talking about how school enrollment has declined every year since she's been here, which is about 20 years. We're gonna have to, to bring in jobs and we have to do things so that we can continue to have a population that will support the community. Um, we need, one of the things though is that when we talk about progress people are like well i don't want to live in savannah i don't want to live in pooler but it doesn't have to be that we need to be proactive and control the way that the progress is done so that it can we can have the progress that we want because we do want to have housing and jobs so that our kids can live here if they choose to right. as opposed to now a lot of people have to go outside of the county to get jobs um one of the biggest issues in the last couple of years in Scriven County was the landfill. Yes. And I don't want to rehash old things, but the process shed a lot of light on, you know, outdated policies and, and the role of planning and zoning and when commissioners should weigh, I guess, the voice and concerns of the people. So obviously, if you're elected commissioner, you're going to be charged with zoning issue or, you know, deciding these types right. of things. How do you, how would you approach balancing you know, recommendations from a planning and zoning committee, the people, and your own values. How do you, how will you, and staff recommendations, of course. So how will you take all of that into consideration to make a decision? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I think one of the big things is that we have to have a plan. Sometimes I feel like often when I look at what's being done in the county, it feels like there's not a solid plan. I think we need to have a plan for the roads, for growth, for everything. And that when you have that plan, you kind of have a path to follow. But one of the things that really, one of the reasons that I'm running is during that whole landfill issue, I realized that people felt like they didn't have anybody listening to them. And really the commissioners, yes, like during the forum, they said the commissioner's job is to set policy. Yes, but you are also supposed to represent and the needs of the people. And I don't feel like people in the county feel especially in our district, I don't feel like they feel like their needs are being listened to and thought about when decisions are being made. Um, another thing is employee retention. You know, you want to recruit and retain quality employees. Of course, you don't want um, people to stay, like some turnover or some progression within an organization is good because yes. new eyes, fresh ideas, all these things. What can Screven County do to recruit and retain good quality people for the county, like to help with the government operations and county operations? Okay, um, with, with that, I feel like offering a, a, reason, a good pay is important, but also the benefits, work conditions are also a big thing. Even more so than the pay and the benefits, people will work harder and they, when they're happier. So we need to make sure that there's a positive environment in the county offices. I think we need to have a list of goals for each office basically, so that people know what they're working towards and then um, kind of go over those goals and that hiring should be made based on those goals and who can get us closer to those goals. Um, you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier about transparency, but how would you describe the state of Scriven County transparency? Is the county being transparent enough? And if not, what kinds of things would you institute to further the transparency? Okay, I'm so glad you asked that. That's one of the topics that I'm really big on because the thing is, if everything is like it should be, then we should have no problem with making it open to the public. And that's what transparency is, visible, open, ethical, making sure that everything is above board. And I think that the county should not just do the minimum, but we should do as much as we can because when people can see what's going on, they don't have to wonder. So just to start with, like just to begin with, I think that we should have two meetings a month and that um, motions should be read twice before they're decided on. 
Um, I think that we should have an agenda that's published five days before and that all items that are going to be discussed should be on the agenda as called for. Sure. I think that we should have minutes that are posted within five days after the meeting so that people can know what happened at the meeting. Um, beyond that, I think that we should have, we should just make it people feel more welcome at the meetings and make it people easier for people to be at the meetings. So we're having the meetings at nine o'clock in the morning. I couldn't go to the meetings for a long time when I was teaching because teachers and most other people with regular jobs have to be at work at nine o'clock in the morning. So I think that we should have the meetings at a time when more people can be there. And someone said, well, even when we did, not many people showed up. It's not whether they're, it's not as important whether they're there or not. I mean, that we want to encourage that. For one thing, I think people are kind of taught not to be involved when they don't feel like their involvement is valued. But more important, it's the availability because I do know people who would be at the meetings, but they can't because of their job. So, um, I mean, that's just the basics. But when there's a called meeting, which you would have less need for called meetings if you're having two meetings a month. But when there's a called meeting, don't just do the bare minimum, which is posting it on the bulletin board outside the, the office. I think that we should, well, in fact, it's called that if you have a website, you're supposed to post it on the website. So that's like the minimum that should be done. But it's not hard to post it on Facebook too, which is where it's something that people are more likely to see. So post it on Facebook, make things more accessible to the people so that they know about them and can show up. And I think that will begin to increase involvement. Beyond that, I think that we need to um, stream the meetings. It's done in other places. It's not, it's not like it would be something that's costly or difficult to do. So the meetings should be streamed. I also think that people should have the opportunity to participate in the meetings remotely. Some people in our can't actually get to the meeting, but they may have a topic they need to speak of. So they could sign up to speak remotely. Again, it's not something that's expensive or difficult. And then we also need to keep the, an archive of the recordings so that when people have a question about something that happened, it's very easy for them to go back and see it themselves. Um, kind of speaking to properties and um, services that the county offers, do you feel like Scriven County taxpayers are getting a good return on their investment for the taxes, the property taxes that they're paying? Or how would you evaluate that, I guess is a better way to ask. I think that we could be doing more. Um, I mean, one thing is that taxes are not high here. So that's a positive. We want to keep it that way, but we can continue to do that by focusing on providing the essentials first and not doing the extras unless we know that there's money in the budget. I think that one of the essentials is the roads. And I would say people don't feel like the roads are in good shape. Like they don't feel like there's a good return on investment on the roads and the trash situation. I mean, government is like a business but their business is people and providing services for the people. So when people can't get to the trash dump, like they literally can't get their trash in the dump because they're too high, there's too much stuff between here, between them and the dump to actually carry it. Like that's not providing for the people. So I think that we could definitely do better in those areas. And we just need to focus on the essentials before we worry about the extras. Is there anything that you're concerned the county is spending too much money on? Off the top of your head. Um, I think that we need to definitely reevaluate the trash situation. And I also think that we need to have something that um, have a good plan for really all of the areas that we're working on. But one of the things that I've seen, now I understand that fire, like the fire department is crucial to our county, but I think we need to have a plan and a way and a path towards moving towards that plan. It seems um, a little more random because like the county was not looking to buy fire trucks. They didn't have an invoice, a purchase order or anything like they were not looking to buy fire trucks. But then there was a motion made and approved at the last meeting to buy fire trucks. I think that um, if there's a set plan and and it's discussed so we know, make sure that the things are going to the best area and um, where it will the most good but that we're not just buying every 
like not just randomly buying equipment that we have a plan that's going towards the goal. Why do you want this job? Um, because I want to make a change. I think that people have have been watching for a while and a lot of people are sometimes people are scared to challenge status quo and we have to have community leaders county leaders who are willing to to work towards the goals that we see for the future they're willing to work for progress they're willing to work to make services better for the county and not just accept the way things are one of the things that i hear a lot well we can't well, that's not cutting it. We don't need to just say, we can't. We can't fix the roads. We can't fix the trash. We need people who are going to look for solutions and then work on the path to, to reach those solutions. Well, um, obviously we can't talk about every topic here, but you have places where people can learn more about you or contact you. Do you want to share where they can find Yes, more? thank you. Um, I have a website and it's Alex Stacy Scott Mincy District 4, and you can find pretty much all of my social media and my website at that. So if you type in Alex Stacy Scott Mincy District 4, you'll be able to find everything. Great. Well, thank you so much for thank chatting you. with us and good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it.